بسم الله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل العقدة من لساني يفقه قولي Welcome in our weekly Islamic discussion night to maintaining your belief to maintaining your Muslim identity and to resolve any confusion any doubt in your mind and also to protect yourself from any desires you may face in your life uh, previously just if you just don't uh, join us before we explain in these sessions how can we maintain our belief uh, by fulfilling the triangle of belief there are three main points you have to consider when you invite for Islam to Islam or when you have a discussion with non-Muslim about Islam or when someone put in your mind some doubt in Islam these three things is the triangle of belief the existence of God and we explain here how can you answer anyone try to confuse or put a confuse, confusion in yourself about this point. And also, the second point, the, to believe that the Quran is the word of Allah Azza wa Jal. This one of the main point. And by the way, all of this uh, on, the, on the Facebook page, Ahl Sunnah, Wal Jama'a. So if you want to send you a link of these videos, we summarize all that in about three or four videos. So just refer to it. And the second one, or the third one, about the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu uh, and some of the doubt that the people may be put you, uh, inside your, your heart about Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and Alhamdulillah we explained that last time. So today, we will go with the desire. Previously, those, this was a doubt, shubuhat. So the desires is one of the challenging of every Muslim. Not every Muslim, any human being, the desire or shahawat. And if you look to the, the main desire that may face you in your life, it comes in foods, drinks, shahwatul ta'am, the food desire, shahwatul sharab, the drink desire. Also, shahwat al-mal, the money, the wealth. When you trade, when you do sales, there is a shahwa to get money. Does it doesn't matter it's halal or haram. Also, there is a shahwa or desire in drinking alcohol or consuming the drugs and narcotic drugs. And we explain from Islamic perspective about this point especially. And also one of the desire that you have to control it, that the shaitan try to expose your aura for anyone, especially for the girls. And we will talk about the dress code of a Muslim, even for the male as well. And also during the desire also, we will discuss the, the relation between the male and female in Islamic way. And what is the boundaries between male and female in Islam, and how can you select your wife according to Islamic perspective? Right. Quickly, we start with first point. What is halal? What is tayyib, good? What type of food or drink we are allowed to eat to drink? How we use, how to use the food? Because sometimes, although the food is halal, but excessive halal may be not recommended. Which type of food and drinks are halal or haram? Type. We need to consider some of the verses and some of the uh, hadith in Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, speech of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, before we go with the halal and haram in terms of food. الله عز وجل يقول في سورة الأعراف كل من حرم زينة الله التي أخرج لعباده والطيبات من الرزق 
قل هي للذين آمنوا في الحياة الدنيا خالصة يوم القيامة كذلك نفصل الآيات لقوم يعلمون Say who has forbidden the abodement of Allah which has produced for his servant and the good lawful thing for, of provision. Say they are for those who believe during the worldly life, but uh, for them it's only especially in the day of the reaction. Right. This ayah is very important. Why? It says that Allah Azawajal produced for you the halal and the tayyibat, the good, to enjoy it. And in the dunya, the disbeliever is like the believer, enjoy the same. He eat like you eat. He eats like you eat. He drinks like you drinks. He marry like you marry. So the same pleasure, the same desire. But in the hereafter, it's only for the believer. The first step you need to know, the first point, that Allah Azza wa Jal give you the favors and the ni'am and the bounties to enjoy it in a halal way in the dunya. But in the Akhirah, only the believer who will enjoy the, the favor and the ni'am of Allah Azza wa Jal. Next verse also in Surah Al-A'raf. قُلْ إِنَّمَا حَرَّمَ رَبِّيَ الْفَوَاحِشَ مَا ظَهَرَ مِنْهَا وَمَا بَطَنَ وَالْإِثْمَ وَالْبَغْيَ بِغَيْرِ الْحَقِّ So Allah Azza wa Jal forbidden some fawahish, some evils, some sins. The one which is apparent and one which is concealed. There is some fawahish, some evils. You can easily identify it as a fahisha, as a haram, as a evils. And sometimes it's the hidden, concealed. So there, that means that we have haram and halal. We have sins and good, bad and good. Right. Also, Allah said in Surah Al Mu'minun. يا أيها الذين آمنوا سورة البقرة يا أيها الذين آمنوا كلوا من طيبات ما رزقناكم واشكروا لله إن كنتم إياه تعبدون. So all believer uh, eat from the good things which has be we, we we have provided for you and be grateful to Allah if it is indeed Him that you worship. So Allah will command the believer to eat from the good food, from the good sustenance. Don't go to the haram. The same command given to the prophets and messengers. In Surah Al-Mu'minun, Ya ayyuha al-Rusulu, Kulu min tayyibati wa amalu saliha, inni bima ta'amaluna alim. O messenger, eat from the good foods and work righteousness. Indeed, I of what you do am knowing. So as you can see, the messengers and the believer, Allah command them the same command, to eat the good food and the good risk. And then also, Allah Azza wa Jal specified certain foods which is prohibited. So generally, the food is halal except these things. So Allah said in these verse that he revealed the haram in food and the halal in food. And all the food is halal except the dead animal, the blood, not any blood, the blood that spilled out, and the lahm al khinzir, the flesh of the swine. These are rich, this is impure. So this is the main haram according to this verse. Then Allah said also, أُحِلَّ لَكُمْ صَيْدُ الْبَحْرِ وَطَعَامُهُ مَتَاعًا لَكُمْ وَلِلسَّيَّارَةِ وَحُرِمَ عَلَيْكُمْ صَيْدُ الْبَرِّ مَا دُمْتُمْ حُرُمًا So Allah made the, the hunting or the food inside the sea lawful. But during your ihram, when you're doing Umrah or Hajj, you cannot hunt the land uh, hunting. But normal, you can of course hunt the land uh, animals. We need to consider this principle in Islam. The initial of things is lawful or permissible. Generally, initial thing of anything, it's, it's halal. Second, whatever produce or leads to haram, it's haram. So if you do something or if you use some means, and this means led you to haram, so this means it's haram. Like for example, if you carry 
an alcohol drink and give it to someone who drink alcohol. You are not drinking alcohol, but you carry the alcohol to someone else. So carrying the alcohol to someone else to drink, it's haram. Although you are not drinking alcohol. Right. Mm. Would that be the same uh, bad days as drinking? Of, of course, it will, uh, look, Hadith Nabi Sallallahu said that Allah cursed yeah. everyone involved in the alcohol. Yeah. And this curse didn't specify the same or equal or less. There is a curse from Allah and His Prophet to anyone involved in alcohol uh, kind so of the, specify, like that's specified that yes bad, 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 bad. yeah that's of course but for the one who drink alcohol islamically there is a punishment called had uh, islamic had for the one who drink alcohol slash on his back 40 slash or 80 according to opinions of ali ibn abi talib like sorry apply for food uh, look, we have hadith saying specifically the, the drink of alcohol. But the other thing, we can take another ayah. And cooperate in righteousness and taqwa and, and fear for Allah, but don't cooperate on the ism, the evils. That means that you share some of the sins, of course. But how? But are you cursed or not? We cannot say that because... We don't have hadith saying that, but we have hadith saying that the one who involved, anyone involved in drinking alcohol or carrying alcohol, cursed by Allah and his prophet. So the initial in the thing is uh, permissible, lawful. Until you have a dalil or an, uh, an uh, evidence that is haram. Also, anything leads to haram, any means leads to haram is haram. The lawful and unlawful to say this lawful and unlawful this only the rights of Allah Azza wa Jal. And you have to consider that. No one can make something haram, Allah make it haram, made it halal. And no one can make something halal, Allah make it haram. So you have to be careful. Also, to do a trick, to avoid haram or to go to the haram with the tricks, it's haram. Like for example, uh, during the fasting of Ramadan, some people, when they're doing wudu, they make a, a washing a mouse many times so they can take some water inside the mouse. They try to trick to avoid the fasting. So this trick is haram, like if you break your fast, if you're doing intentionally, deliberately, and you do tricks. Type. Also, if someone make the halal haram and the haram halal this some kind of association with Allah because the only one who makes the halal haram or haram halal or make the halal halal and haram haram is Allah not anyone also good intention will not repair the haram so if you have good intention you invite one of your friend non-Muslim in a dinner to uh, talk about Islam. And he requested for, from you to bring alcohol with you or to give him uh, alcohol. You have good intention to let him accept Islam. But you use haram way, haram thing. So good intention will not repel uh, bad action. Also, you have to be careful with the doubtful things. You have to stay away from the doubtful, the things that have doubt. Because halal is obvious, haram is obvious, and in between, the gray line is doubtful. Also, in halal is enough for you than haram. So why you drink alcohol? You have orange juice, you have uh, coke, you have whatever, you have... Why you go to Allah? <laughs> and also, you need to consider necessity brings the unlawful halal. If you are in a necessity condition, if you are in a desert, and you're striving from hungry, and you will lose your life, and you have in front of you a dead animal or swine meat, you, you can eat it just to cover your hunger. 
This is called الدرورات تبيح المحذورات or necessity will uh, produce ethnic and uh, decrease or remove the prohibition. طيب, before we go with the halal and haram, you have to know what is the rules or the ahkam in shara, the shara ahkam. We heard about wajib, yes, is that correct? We hear about haram, we hear about masnoon, sunnah, we hear about makruh, we hear about mubah. So what is the wajib? What is haram? What is sunnah? What is makruh? What is mubah? And we have two groups of scholars in these definitions. The jumhur, ulama, the majority of scholars in one side, and the ahnaf in other side. The jumhur al-ulama said we have five types of ahkam, the rules in halal and haram. The wajib means that if you do it, you will take reward. If you leave it, you will take sins. Or you maybe have punishment. This is wajib, obligatory or compulsory. Haram, unlawful. If someone did this action, he will be have a punishment. He will have a punishment, or will have had uh, Islamic had. And if he leave these things, he will take rewards. So if he stays away from haram, you take reward. If you do haram, you will take sins. Masnoon, sunnah, or mandub, recommended. If you do it, you take reward. If you're not doing, nothing. Makruh, disliked. If you leave it, you will take reward. If you do it, you will not take sense. Makruh. And explain the difference between makruh and haram. Mubah, lawful. The thing that if you do it or not doing, nothing happened. No reward, no sense. So again, wajib. If you do the wajib, you will take reward. If you don't do the wajib, you will take punishment or take sense. Haram. If you do the haram, you will maybe face punishment or take sense. And if you leave it, you will take rewards. Masnoon or optional or sunnah. If you do it, you take reward. If you're not doing, you not take reward or you will not, no punishment. Makruh or dislike, if you leave it, you will take reward. If you do it, nothing happened. Mubah, doesn't matter if you do it or not doing, no reward, no uh, sense. But however, remember this statement. Al-ta'at to heal المباحات إلى عبادات الطاعات obedience to heal convert مباحات لوفل into إلى worship عبادات again الطاعات to heal العبادات أو to heal المباحات إلى عبادات so for example if you taking dinner with your wife, خلاص? and you have a food in front of both of them, and you take a piece of food and put it in her mouth. If you do that because you follow the hadith of Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that he said that even the food you put it in the mouth of your, of your uh, wife, you will reward. If you do that with good intention, you will take reward. Although this is a food, also. If you play any type of games or any type of sport to build yourself, to be a strong Muslim, to do the ibadah, to do the fasting, you'll be rewarded for these types of sport. So again, at-ta'at, obedience, convert, to hawil, al-mubahat, lawful, ila, into ibadat, worshipping. Khalas? This is the five main rules according to Jumhur al-Ulama. According to Ahnaf, they have seven. They have seven. They have fard and they have wajib. In, Ahl, in Jumhur al-Ulama, they have only wajib. So what is the difference between fard 
and wajib. Right. Fard, if you translate it, will be compulsory. Wajib, obligatory. Is that correct? Right. Fard, according to Ahnaf, that they have a dalil, evidence, which is direct dalil, specific dalil. Give me that. No, that is a white list. Also, the whole list is there. Prophet Muhammad 
saw his wife, I think Sophia or Maimuna, one of his wives. She was fasting Friday. And he asked her, did you fast yesterday? And she said, no. And he's, and the better. Where's the Maybe bring the other one. Then, then he asked her, do you, you will fast tomorrow, means Saturday? She said no. And then he explained to her, you can't fast Friday alone. So this hadith showed that there is a prohibition to fast Friday alone. But this prohibition is because it's haram or it is disliked and if it is disliked disliked because it is disliked because it's haram or disliked because it is preferable to not fast so Ahmad said fasting Friday is disliked or preferable disliked but in Jumhur al-Ulama said it is haram to fast Friday because Prophet Muhammad mentioned to do not fast Friday and there is no delil came that this prohibition changed. So we can't fast Friday alone unless it is Arafa day, unless it is Ashura day, but specifically Friday alone is prohibited to fast Friday. What is haram? Let us see what is haram. Allah said, حرمت عليكم الميتة والدم ولحم الخنزير وما أهل لغير الله به والمنخنقة والمنقودة والمتردية والنطيحة وما أكل السبع إلا ما تكيتم وما دلح على النصر وأن تستقسموا بالأزلام This is the pillars in, the, in this point This verse is the pillars on them it mentions that the maita unlawful, the blood unlawful, the swine unlawful, the flesh of the swine, and also the munchanika, the animal which is suffocated, and mawkuda, the animal which hated until death, and mutaradiya, the animal that saw from the top and died from the mount of any high place. When Natiha, if two animals fight it together and die, this become haram to eat these animals. Also, one of the pillars of food in Islam, Hadith of Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and Abdullah ibn Abbas, radiallahu anhu, qala, نهى رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم عن كل ديناب من السباع وكل دي مخلب من الطير. Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم prohibit every beast of prey with a fang. You know the fang? And every bird with a talon. You know the talon? Keep this in mind because I will ask question after we finish this introduction. You have to answer this question. So now we mention the maita, the swine. Hmm, what else? The animal of the siba, which is a nab, which has a, a fang, and the bird which has a talon. Also. Khamr. Prophet Muhammad وسلم, said in the hadith when he has been asked can we convert the khamr into vinegar he said no 
So we have khamr. What is khamr, by the way? Khamr from the word Arabic khamara, kha mim ra, which is cover. Cover the mind, cover the brain. Can we convert the khamr into vinegar? If you go to the chemical structure of the khamr, it is related to what's called alcohol. And be careful. Not any alcohol harm, but the alcohol that produces intoxin action is harm. For example, you know the glycerol? Glycerol alcohol. It's alcohol. But most of our food contains glycerol. But this glycerol, it is not hunger. Okay? So the hunger, any substance that intoxicates the brain. Like, can we convert the hunger into vinegar to become vinegar? If you do it deliberately, it's haram. But if it is naturally fermented from alcohol to vinegar, it's halal. So when you go to the market and you buy the vinegar, be careful. We have three types of vinegar so far. The completely synthetic vinegar, which comes from chemical synthetic pathway, it's halal. And the naturally fermented hum, uh, vinegar, which comes from the hum, but after fermentation, naturally, without initiation, the fermentation is halal. And the last one, which is haram, if you initiate the conversion of hum into vinegar, this is the hadith mentioned, it is haram. And you know the story behind this hadith? There is an orphan inherited from the parents. All their wealth was hunger. All of their wealth is alcohol. And they don't have money. This is their wealth. And the Sahaba went to Prophet Muhammad وسلم, and asked him, Can we convert this hunger to vinegar and sell this hunger for them? But Prophet Muhammad وسلم, didn't compromise. Halal is halal, haram is haram, and Allah will not forgive them. Allah will not for forget them. Allah will not leave them. So, conversion of khal, of khamr into khal, by yourself, it's haram. If you leave it naturally fermented, to so check the label of the vinegar, it's called naturally fermented vinegar. This is halal to, to drink or to eat. Also, one of the pillars in halal and haram food, hadith of Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam about the seed. Qala, huwa al-tahuru ma'uhu al-hillu maytatuhu. The seed, its water is pure. And the dead animal from the seed is halal to eat. Remember this concept, you mentioned how many concepts there be four or five. When I ask question, you have to apply this concept, this is halal or haram. We'll see now. Also, Hadith Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Uhillat, Uhillat lana, or Uhillat lana, maytatan wa daman, al maytatan al hut wa al jarad, wa al daman al kabid wa al duha. So the mayta generally is haram, except to the fish and the locust. You know the locust? Jarab. Yeah. Yes, and jarab. It's haram to eat. And also the blood is haram to eat, except the spleen and the liver. Cow liver, you can eat very delicious. Especially if you don't like Egyptian style. <laughs> also, Hadith Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he prohibited Naha Yawma Khaybar 
عن لحوم الحمر الأهلية وأذن في لحوم الخيل. عند ديف خيبر بطل، بوبيت محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم بروهبت the domestic donkey and make the meat of the horse lovely. So the domestic donkey is hard to eat. While the wild one, which is in a in a in a desert, you can eat it, of course. Fine. Group activity. How many group? One, two, three. Plus. One, two, three. First group. Start from this side. Discuss with your friends the types of food and drinks made halal by Allah Azza wa Jalla. Give me example of halal food. Allah make it halal for us. Hmm? Give you one minute. And you? Types of food or drinks made haram by Allah Azza wa Jalla. And you? Why? Allah made this haram food and drink. Mention halal food. Mention haram or drink of food. And you, when they finish, they have to Response why this haram? Ready? You do one? Halas. Okay, do one. Give me an example of halal food. Liver. Mm. Fish. Mm. 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 So, you eat this? You eat this? <laughs> Give me what food you eat. Chicken. Any chicken? Slamically? Yes. Ahmed, I'm not Yes, any food except the, the prohibition that Allah said in the Quran and the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. This group, listen to the group because you answer this question. Haram food or drink? Alcohol, yes. Why alcohol is haram? Yes, discover. Dead cow. Dead cow. Why is haram? Why is haram? Because the cow could be like suffocated. Uh huh. Or even dead by its throat and like. I think for for the animal to be halal to eat, the blood has to. Yes. Type. This is uh, this is a scientific explanation, but I give you the best answer of that. The dead animal is haram because Allah said that. That's it. سمعنا وأطعنا. Listen and obey. That's it. Without knowing the reason, you have to follow. Okay. Don't ask why. Since Allah the Lord, you already submit yourself to Allah the Submit your heart to Allah the So. If Allah prohibits something, don't say why. Okay? <laughs> trick. Five. This is a trick. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Get ready for the next uh, activity to know it's halal or haram and maybe something new for you. Five. Mm. First, anyone eat ate before become? You yeah, used to eat it. Yeah. We, yeah, we used to eat it with rice and freak. Hamam <laughs> the freak. <laughs> Type kangro. Mm. It's not mentioned as a haram, so 
Yes, uh, because it is does not from the uh, animal that has. Uh, yes, I uh, crab. Uh, uh, مخالب. No, but, no, no, not like that. No, not like no, not like a bear. Mm. Uses to tear up and. Mm. That's my understanding. Which one? The crab arm or the crab arm? Crab. crab should be hard. It comes from a sea, does it? Is it a sea crab? Is it a sea crab? Yes. Depends. Okay. If it is live outside the sea, it's haram. Okay. If it inside the sea, halal. Well, this one's not if it's marine crab, it is halal. Some type of crab live in the mud outside, not in the sea. I don't, don't think it's here, but maybe all of here is marine. Most of the, the crab is made by horse, of course, we just mentioned. Chicken, if it's latter extremity, it will be halal. Dog, stop. Elephant. Uh, there is a, by the way, there is a difference in opinions between scholar and elephant, by the way. But uh, I dislike to eat a call elephant. Hmm. Oh, of course, all of this had to slaughter Islamically, by the way. Uh, look, it doesn't matter the way you slaughter the, the animal, but the things that produce the blood, whatever, by machine or by hand or halal. Depends. Doesn't matter the way. Like turkey, mm. frog, mm. beer. Cat, canary, or oh, barret. Mm. Can you? It's bird. But actually, there is the two opinions between the scholars about it. Shafi'i says it's harm, but the majority say you can eat it. If you find it, if you can catch it. <laughs> Tiger. <laughs> Tiger. Uh. Bad, haram, ostrich, halal. Yes, spider, it's insect. All the insects haram. Uh, it is have like a qiyas, like the ant, because uh, the, the, the ant is haram to eat because uh, when Suleiman, or when one of the prophets uh, injured by one ant. He burned all the, the ants, and then he has been uh, said to him, it's only one hurt you, so why you burn all? You have to only burn one. So anyway, uh, the insects, it's haram because it is it, it, it's some of like disliked by the, the nuts or by the soul. It has some toxic, some, but I didn't find any hadith mentioned about the insect, but it's more likely it's haram. Uh, you know this one? Honey, honey yes. Haram, of course. Uh, camel. Mm. Boar, halal. Mussels, halal. Ant, haram. Sparrow, any bird. So all the, apply the same rules. So? Look. Look. And some, some of these have different opinions. So in this case, if you have doubt, don't eat it. That's it. But just try to mention that something have two opinions. Right. This is uh, also one of the important verse showing that أو دم مسبوحا أو لحم خنزير فإنه رجس أو فسقا أهل لغير الله. Say I do not find within that which was revealed to me anything forbidden to one who would eat it unless it be a dead animal or blood spread out or flesh swine. Is that mean that we can eat the fat of the swine? No, because Anything haram, all the body will be haram. 
Also, this is just explaining how uh, these birds, uh, the suffocating animal, the, 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 the killed animal by fighting together. So we have dead animal, strangled animal, animal died by violent blow, animal died by headlong fall, and animals that had been gored to death, and animal uh, partly eaten by a wild animal, uh, flesh of swine, including big fat, oil, and anything made from them, and animals sacrificed except the name of Allah. Be very important. If you want to buy a meat, or if you want to make sure that this meat is halal, the one who should slaughter the animal should be a Muslim or from the people of Kitab, Ahlul Kitab, the Christian or Jewish. This should be. If anyone other than this three, even he slaughter the animal, it's haram to eat. If he is a Muslim, but not practicing. A Muslim. Saying Shahada, that's it. We don't judge on the hearts. Fine. Before we go with the, the terrible web of the two dangerous deeds, the drinks and drugs, I won't, I won't swallow these words. The maida, the dead, and What about the skin of the dead? Animal. Can we take the skin to use this skin in bags, in shoes? What do you think? Also, can we take the skin of the wolf, of the donkey, to use it, to use it in leather production or in the bags and shoes? Can we do that? If you know the answer, give me the evidence. Hmm. No? What is your evidence? What did they make? Um, they use them. Like, they most of our bags, you don't know from where it comes. It could be come from the skin of dead animal. It could be come from the skin of dog. It could be come from the skin of wolf. You don't know. So there is a hadith. That Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu said, "Ayyama ahab dubir tahr." Any or every skin of animal treated, it will be clean. You know the treatment, treatment, chemical treatment of the. We used to do a salt in our country. Yes. After in in Qurban in the Eid al-Adha, we take the skins of the animal, uh, put some salt for a few days in the sun. And we'll be dried and we can use it like a, a mat, something like that. So, this is because of this hadith. And this hadith open for you the isness. So, we can use any kind of skin of animal. So, there is some clothes made from the wolf skin uh, or the uh, fox as well. Fox. Fox. Yeah, very famous. Fox. Doesn't matter. No, very good question. But what about the big and dog? Very good question. The big and dog have a speciality in haram. The big is mentioned here that all the big parts is haram to use. So it does not apply in this hadith. The dog, based on the opinion of the scholar about the najasa of the dog. The Jumhur al-Ulama, except Malikiyya, said that the dog is Najis. Malikiyya said no, it is, it is pure. So if you follow Maliki Madhab, so the skin of the dog, you can use it. But the Jumhur said it's Najis, so I go with it. So it is it's not uh, permissible to use the skin of the dog, as well as the, the pig. The two dangerous deeds, drinks and drugs. We need to know first the meaning of khamr. I explained the khamr, khamara, 
غطى What is the steps of prohibition of khamr in Islam? How many stages the khamr pass through until it becomes haram? How many? You mentioned four. Four. Most of the people know three and didn't know the fourth. Let us see what is the first. ومن ثمرات النخيل والأعناب تتخذون منه سكرا ورسقا حسنا إن في ذلك لا آيات لقوم يعقلون. So and from the fruits of the palm trees and grape vine you take intoxicant and a good provision indeed in that is a sign of for a people who are reason. So initially Allah said about the fruits. In the palm tree and the grape, said that you take from these fruits, either polluting in a good way, like trading, and you take a good sustenance, or you produce the intoxicant. Didn't say it's halal haram. Just said the people use the fruits of the palm tree and the grape differently. One use it for for producing uh, intoxicant, and the other use for uh, trading, normal trading. Second stage. يسألونك عن الخمر والميسر قل فيهما إثم كبير ومنافع للناس وإثمهما أكبر من نفعهما. They ask you about the wine or the خمر and gambling. Say in them it is a great sin and benefit for the people but their sins is greater than their benefit. Now, it becomes a little bit moved towards the haram by saying it has some benefit and some hmm, sins. But the sins is more than the benefit. You have to consider it. The third stage. يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا لَا تَقْرَبُوا الصَّلَاةَ وَأَنْتُمْ سُكَارَى حَتَّى تَعْلَمُوا مَا تَقُولُوا O oh believer, O oh you have believed, do not approach prayer while you are intoxicated until you know what you are saying or in a state of denial. Uh, unless you are except you passing through a place. So as you can see here, the third stage was avoiding drinking alcohol before salah. So you can you can go to salam where you can know what you can what you are saying. The last one. Ya ayyul ladina amanu inna mal khamru wal maysir wal ansar wal azlam rijsun min amal al-shaytan fajtanibu la'allakum tuflihun. O you who have believed, indeed in Tuxtan gambling, sacrificing on stones, altars to other than Allah, and uh, the divine devil arrows are but deflement from the walk of shaitan. So avoid it. And here the word avoid is more strong than saying harm. Because when you avoid something, you avoid all the means, all the ways that led to this sin. Here we have mas'ala. Hamr is haram, no one argues. It is clean or impure. So that means if you drop of hamr, drop on your clothes, you have to clean your clothes or not? Hmm. Yes. Hmm. What else? This is a a mas'ala have a different opinion between the scholars. I, I give you the two opinions. Because two opinions will give you a consequence of fatwa. The first opinion, it is najis, impure. Because as you can see in this verse, Allah said rich. It is dirty from the shaitan. But the other side said it is not najis, she is pure. And what is the dalil? The dalil first, this verse. 
يا ايها الذين امنوا لا تقربوا الصلاه وانتم سكارى او يو هو هاف بليف دو نوت ابروتش ذا برير وايل يو ار انتوكسيتيد سو اف ذا خمر از نيس اند سم ون درينك الك it will make his mouth nervous and then he go to pray how this one thing also Anas ibn Malik mentioned in a hadith that he was with his stepfather Abu Talha Abu Talha no maybe not Abu Talha I'm sorry and his friends and he was, he was serving them the alcohol is before the prohibition of Khamr. And when a caller called in the Medina that there is a verse revealed to prohibit the Khamr, everyone threw his Khamr in the streets of the Medina. So Anas ibn Malik said the Medina will be like a river of Khamr in the streets. Everyone saw it. Sami'na wa ata'na. Listen and obey. So if the khum is nijis, the best way of throwing the khum in the way of the waste, in the rubbish place, not in the streets. So the people, if it is nijis and they walk, they maybe touch their clothes and have the jazz. So this is the two opinions. But if you follow the opinion that the khum is nijis, a lot of restriction will be happening. And you need to be careful. First one, perfume. Has alcohol. If you follow the first opinion that the khamr is nice, so if you put perfume on your clothes, your clothes become nice and pure. Love. And the the correct opinion that I'm following, it is not nice. It is pure. It's nice. It is najasa ma'nawiyya. It is not physical najasa. It is, it is like a ma'nawi, I mean, literal or somewhere. Virtual, virtual najasa. It is not actual najasa. It is because it is something covers the brain, something make the person uh, do the, the, the bad things. So it is not an actual najasa in terms of physical najasa. It's not like a yoin. And this also brings you another mas'ala. What about using alcohol in medicine? What about using alcohol in bakery? Is it permissible to cook with khamr or to add an extract in, in, in bakery? If it's permissible to add alcohol in some medicine, you need to be careful before you say halal or haram. Because if you say halal for something haram, it's like you say haram for something halal. No difference. If you bring the perfume, it has alcohol. And someone drink this perfume, what will happen to him? He will be drunk. Toxic. He will go to the emergency immediately. So if this perfume does not intoxicate the brain, so it is not hunger. It is toxic, not hunger. So it is not nervous. Clear? Also, during the, the COVID pandemic, we used to put some hand sanitizer in our hand. It has alcohol. So if you follow the first opinion, which is a khamr, is nervous. So whatever you add in your hand, you have to clean your hand. And as I said, the, the most toraja qawl is the khamr. It is not physical najas. So it's, it's clean. It is touched in any place. No need to wash. Let's stop on this, inshallah. Still have an hour.
agenda, we have a lot of items, confusing items. We, we didn't mention the confusing item yet. Plus, after a very long time, life. and the different types of the tafsir and how can you understand the word of Allah according to the Quran and Sunnah and on Wednesday we have the Umdat al-Ahkam, the pillars of Fiqh we are in the chapter of Umrah and Hajj and Thursday inshallah we have this discussion inshallah so all this timetable here in the, in the wall if you can take photo so keep in mind inshallah we'll see you inshallah Yadakumullah khairah